the standard social ecological system to be self-organized. That is the turn for the students to start their presentation. And so before um, visiting the Casino Corridor in Fletcher Park, our professor helped us prepare to think and act as community planners. We organized data for the framework, reviewed case studies, went through Plan NYC 2030's goals and full strategies, conducted workshops, and analyzed what would benefit the Casino Corridor, Fletcher Park community, and social and ecological systems. Armed with our research, we made a class visit with professionals from Casino Border, Flushing Park, and the Queen's Botanical Gardens. Here, we were able to take pictures, observe the current conditions, and review our challenges and strategies. So, after the, the, the workshop and our visit, we were asked to um, design a map and develop our um, challenges in our area. We have some key locations that uh, to know where you are. We have Casano Park, Casano Lake, Casano Boulevard, and Queens College. And so the next step was to um, come up with challenges. The challenges on the map in the areas that were affected the most. So what we came up with was um, giving each group a color. So the blue colors, the blue dots are water and green space. Uh, orange dots are mobility and energy, and brown dots are food production and waste. So each dot has a number. So if we look at each number, we can have the look at the challenge that is in this list of challenges right here. So the first group that will be presenting is water and space, which was my group. So this is our um, group. We focused on mobility of energy and the challenges associated with that. And for the first one, um, one of the challenges we realized is that um, there's a lack of recycling bins, and in order to reduce the solid waste that comes out of the um, the park, as well as in correlation with the plan for 20, uh, NYC 2030, they want to reduce the solid waste stream out of New York, so we propose to uh, implement more recycling bins around the park. The 13 and 7, um, if we, we uh, walked uh, through the park, then we noticed that uh, there really aren't any lights in the park, and we want to see if we can uh, make the park uh, accessible even at night, that people can just walk through the park without having to you know, uh, and, and feel safe doing you know by walking through the park, and also we want to promote uh, renewable energy supply because we find that the park, if if any kind of energy supply to the park, it should be off the grid um, because this is what the green space is supposed to be, and this is what we are proposing. For number eight, uh, we're. Uh, we we research that there are no pipelines on the park or around the New York uh, uh, social political system. So uh, having pipelines will initially uh, connect the city and will help us transport in a faster way. And it's great. Cool. <laughs> By working with Queens Botanical Gardens, we can start small in 2030, just working with Queens College and two local businesses, and then host monthly community workshops to gather organic waste. And by building this foundation, we can expand it in 2050 to all air, all schools in the area, and up to at least 20, I'm sorry, 12 local businesses and hold uh, weekly education. 
educational workshops as opposed to monthly. And then in relation to the education section, uh, the number that we can for 2030 would be 25 interns to match that amount of space and production capacity. And then in 2050 to help manage with the expanded capacity and the amount of town farming, we have 100 interns. And the program of course would be high schools and Queens College and could either be for some sort of credit or uh, work study for the school program. So as you can see, the food school lunch demand per year is about a million pounds, and we would be exceeding that by 2050. And then on a closing remark for the food sustainability, um, something that we'd just like to see in the community is um, interaction between the residents and for the people who are there to share um, knowledge that they know about the garden, because as we mentioned as we toured the park, there's a lot of um, different ethnic communities, like the Chinese community, the Korean community, and each of them has different ways and um, remedies that they use for gardening and um, fertilizing and things like that. So if they actually share the information with each other and then just um, helped the public part of the civil association see what's going on so there's more um, oversight and just more regulation towards that. And education uh, throughout all of our strategies will be the time the time factor that will actually help us remain sustainable. So every everything that we propose can become a class or a workshop where the community can be invited in, where students can be invited in and understand and learn how to participate in making things. The main important goal is, first of all, to create a closer loop in energy, food, water supply, and combined with education, and to create a more circular neighborhood for flashing this in a social ecological system. And uh, our second goal, as a new promotion of students from environmental studies, as a future expert to improve the quality of life of neighborhoods in New York City. I have one question though about the bowl agriculture because currently, as far as I know, uh, Queens Botanical Garden has their own farmers market. So I was wondering if you would partner with them to create a bigger farmers market or if you would still have two individual farmers. We do plan on partnering with Queens of Town for Gardens because we're going to be partnering with them for their compost program. Um, so we want to learn the best and efficient ways to uh, implement uh, distributing the food. Um, we're, we're open to uh, having our own farmer's market, but the production is going to be pretty low in the beginning. So we definitely are going to be partnering with them and see what will work out best with the resources that we're able to create. I've watched over the last 70 years what has gone on in flushing. And while some of your ideas were really, really very out of the park in terms of um, reality, they were wonderful to live in a perfect world. One question I have is in general, who thinks that bikes are the be all and end all? All this waste that they're going to um, take from the restaurants, I presume, to the gardens, I think a bicycle them there, I think they'll walk it there. You seem to think that we don't need cars and trucks. Have you ever driven a car or truck for a living? They um, say yes or no. There are people whose, whose, whose income depend on cars and trucks. You cannot eliminate it. This is not Disney World. Professor Bonza, they did an incredible job. Okay, uh, uh, as a capital manager on this campus, it has taken us seven to ten years to be able to get a project done. Okay? I see the long-term presentation, and then if all you presented was things that we can immediately fix, then you wouldn't be looking at the future. And that problem just one question pertaining to the jurisdiction of this who owns the bar. 
That's the uh, state of New York and New York State Department of Parks. Did anybody here reach out to Parks at all to find out what their thoughts? Because as Beverly was expressing before, we, we're, we're dealing with a government agency that basically shuts their door on, on anything that's you know that they don't perceive as bringing in revenue. Yeah, and this is it could potentially be seen as bringing revenue uh, for the agency, maybe not. I'm just curious, as part of your your research, um, did anybody reach out to any government agents? We reached out to the University of Chicago, New York organizations, and Russian, directed to the University of Chicago, and the local organizations in New York and both ways. So, yeah, parts of the department made it to all the community organizations here to see the high level of the parts of the country to try to make the same association. We sent letters to the parts of the parts. Yes, and I just speak with somebody about the parts and they know what we're doing. No interest at all. We will finish the session. Thank you for all for coming. And uh, now there will be some refreshment. Thank you. I'm here with Professor Alonzo Ju, and um, he's been here for how long have you been here now? One year. One year. Um, so I wanted to ask, um, what experiences did you bring uh, into the Queens College community? Uh, in your professional. My background uh, as a, an expert, uh, but also as a citizen of the city of Barcelona in Spain, it's that uh, as an expert we have a lot of incredible uh, knowledge and uh, incredible tools to uh, propose and to design sustainable cities. But all of these tools and um, proposals are uh, very top-down, point of view. And uh, also, as my uh, as a practitioner and an urban activist, I saw that uh, it's very important to uh, work all together as a, not only the uh, academic commun community or the uh, community-based organization all uh, alone, but to share our, our knowledge and sharing and working together and also community could co-design with Airspect and probably this kind of solution and proposal on new strategy could be uh, uh, the new future for cities because we used to work more in a top-down approach and uh, now we have to link it bottom-up approach and top-down approach um, I involve my students in uh, a case study in a neighborhood in Barcelona the Baikarka neighborhood and it was three years ago and some of the students continue to be involved with the community and they start to, to be involved to promote uh, different actions but also to collaborate with the formal and informal institution and now they are key agents between the, the government the municipal government agency and the community and they work as an expert. Do you think that uh, students but also key agents like you could be now info after this course in relation with the several leaders of the neighborhood? Students and you will be more involved with the uh, future uh, plans and strategic plans for the neighborhood Kisen and Flashing Social Ecological System? Uh, this group was having the opportunity to work like a professional because a course like this is not done uh, generally. It's only books and classrooms, you know, but to go and experience what they experience 
it's something different. It's, it's get real. It's uh, get the people uh, in the real history of the place, the life of the citizen, the life of the neighborhood. Uh, is what they should be doing. Um, it's what they should be learning <laughs> because if they leave that experience, they will know how to apply all this knowledge that they know now in a future work that is related to this. Well, this is how it should be done. Really, maybe it's not what they say is not. They cannot do it, but it's to start the role, uh, the ball rolling. Exactly. And uh, it should be like that, interacting with the community and with the students. It should be like that, not just a book and a pen and a, you know, it should be like this. Thank you. That's my opinion. <laughs> <laughs>